I am unashamed. What about you? Sometimes I stop at uh, at Chick Fil A and pick up some chicken biscuits for y'all and crew. I don't eat them much because I've been on this low carb diet. Which, by the way, so I'm today. I can eat no solid food, only clear liquids, because tomorrow I have to have my five year colon scope. Oh boy, done. Have you had it done yet, Jace? I did it once, and it was. One of the worst things oh, it's I've awful. ever, ever done. Look, so here's the, here's the way this goes down, Daddy, because you've never had it before, right? Yeah. So you you drink all this clear, you can't eat any food, and then starting at about 5 o'clock this afternoon, there's two bottles sitting on my counter, and I've been just looking at them for about three days, just like I'm building up my, as the Bible would say, I'm girding up my loins to have to dive into this, what's about to happen. So you drink that with some water. It doesn't taste good, or used not to five years ago it didn't. You drink this, and then in about 30 minutes to an hour, you feel a gurgle deep within, you know, your your system. I don't even remember that. Oh, it's I've tried to and then you flush that. out your bowels for the next 12 hours so that they But can, if you have no symptoms of anything. Why would you do this? Well, That's exactly what I thought. And I heard some bit about it. Here's, so, I'll tell you why I did it. So anyway. I was having all these images of the road signs in my mind. You know, off ramp only. Do not <laughs> enter. You're going the wrong way. Exit only. Construction. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Speed limit. It's just like all these signs, and I thought they're just coming I, by. I just, it was like I was on a road going to. So I anyway, I, and I agree with all those things. So here's why I did it, Dad, because our friend John Howard told me, he said, you know, they say when you turn 50, you should have it looked at because you don't know. And the thing about it is if you did have colon cancer or the beginning of it. But you didn't know it. I did, and you, Right. If you didn't no know symptoms. it, it could kill you. But it, if you knew about it, it's very treatable. Of all the cancers, it's the most treatable if you can find it. So here's why I'm doing it. So that was the, why I did it the first time. But what happened was, so there's some polyps in there, like three or four, which they say that's normal when as you get older. But that's where the cancer it comes from these polyps. So his suggestion was, he said, look, I know this is unpleasant. I know you don't want to do this, but since you had the polyps, you probably ought to come back in five years and let's make sure it doesn't start. So now it's just more of a preventative. Trust me. I, I, I the road signs Jace talked about, I, I see them as well, but anyway, so that's where I'm going to be tomorrow. Just so you know, um, you know, having that done, hopefully things will turn out uh, well. So anyway, Chick-fil-A. So I stopped at Chick-fil-A yesterday as we were recording. I brought dad some chicken biscuits. And so I get up to pay at the drive through And by the way, any drive through now, drive throughs are a nightmare because of coronavirus because nobody's eating in hardly in these fast food places. So everybody does the drive through Or most people's drive throughs they're, they're not equipped to handle, you know, all day heavy traffic. So it's just like, uh, but Chick-fil-A, because they were already fast and good, which Mia worked at Chick-fil-A too. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, like they figured it out. They get people out there in the parking lot. They they sectioned areas all. I mean, they don't make a good chicken sandwich and a good chicken biscuit. They know how to move people through the establishment. And they have manners. You know, I mean, my manners. daughter, she doesn't work there anymore. But to this day, when I say something to her, she says, My pleasure. <laughs> And she I'll didn't say, say that before she worked for Chick Fil A, did she? Heck no. <laughs> she did like every other teenager, you know. Uh huh. <laughs> now I say, well, thanks, Mia, for doing that. She's like, my pleasure. And she's like, I don't know why I keep saying that. I said, I love it. It's a good thing. Yeah, to keep it, saying. it's just they. I mean, that was their their basically business. Right. Let's have good food. Yep. Let's do this as efficiently as possible. And since we're taking people's money for us to survive, let's be very courteous and kind. That's right. Well, and we met, like Dad and I spoke at a Chick-fil-A uh, sponsored event a few years ago. You may not remember this, Dad. We, we spoke at Stone Mountain, Georgia, to about 15,000 young people. 
and Chick-fil-A was the main sponsor. And so they were providing us to get there. Well, I didn't know all that. Like, you know, I handled our event, but you know, we were doing events like crazy. So I just knew we were a, a private plane was coming and we were supposed to show up at this time to get on it. I knew that we were speaking at a youth event. So while we get out to the little FBO here in town, we come in, you know, and I see all these guys with the Chick-fil-A things on their, you know, lapel, you know, the little name tags. And then so this guy walks up to me and his said, Bubba Kathy. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if he's related to the Kathys that own it. He comes up and shakes my hand. He said, oh, it's so nice to meet you. And I, I just thought they recognized it. I'm not putting together that they're there for us. And so I was like, well, man, it's great. I said, are you like one of the Kathys? He said, oh, yeah, I'm one of the brothers. And I said, oh, that's great. I said, were y'all like opening a store in the area? I was trying to figure out why they were there at the FBO. And I look out and see their plane, which is called Move Force One. You know, it's got Chick Fil A on the side of it, and and he looked at me. He's like, "Uh, we're here to get you and your dad and your mom to go to Georgia." And I was like, "Oh, we're with you," because yeah, nobody ever said anything about Chick Fil A. It was just here's a youth yeah. event, so it was really awesome. But we we had a great time meeting them. They're very godly people. It's a uh, their their dad who started their business, uh, just you know, like everybody in one store, Atlanta, Georgia, and now they're I think they're the third biggest. Um, play is think it's Starbucks, McDonald's, and Chick Fil A. Ten billion, oh, really? ten billion. Last and just year. think of the persecution they got. But anybody that's been there, I mean, look, they they're diverse. Oh yeah, and they're fantastic. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, and anybody that works there loves it. So so I stopped to pay for the chicken biscuits. Um, I'm getting to my story, and and so I, you know, now the credit card nobody touches it. You know, they put it out, you get it out of a basket. Nobody's touching anything. So I go to put my card in. She said, oh, no, sir, the guy in front of you paid for yours. And oh, I, I do that all the time. Well, so I'd never. Oh, really? This never happened, and I've never yeah. done it. it. But I was like, they didn't want to say that. So I started looking. The guy's like pulling out, and I thought, did he know me? Or was he just, I thought maybe it was somebody I knew. I did notice he was looking at his rearview mirror a couple of times because, you know, while we were in line. I don't think I knew him. So, but I left there to impact me. I thought, man, what a nice well, thing. Because he didn't know what I was going to order. Look, somebody did that for me a couple of years ago. And so now when I go to Chick-fil-A, more than a few times, I'll, 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 so, do it. so like, to- I want to buy as far <laughs> as this goes, whatever I put up there in the line. I'm telling you, it is, it well, does look, something to it you. It does because today I go back through to, because we were coming back out to get dad some chicken biscuits. And so I was like, I want to pay for the guy behind me. Mm-hmm. as well and she was like oh that is so that is so cool and so then i just i paid for mine then i paid his on the credit card but he's going to have the same impact but i thought that's really how you sort of pay stuff forward in the mindset of yeah you know doing something nice for somebody well you know i've I never been through a chick-fil-a line i don't think <laughs> i'm trying to remember maybe way way back you know what you don't spend so as you're much- talking about a line of vehicles Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it's. I well, did when that you with somebody one time, but <laughs> you pull up there and you're like, <laughs> it's "Oh like, boy, they drive through places." I mean, yeah. is is that real? Does I that did. really That's happen? One of the few places that I'll I'll go. I remember Dad eating his first. I, I've told this story before, but the first, his first spicy Chick Fil A sandwich he'd ever had. Yeah. In the airport, and Dad's eating his things like halfway through, and he said, "Ow." That's the best chicken sandwich yeah. I've ever had. That, and it was so funny. I just bust out laughing because I was like. Dad, you've never had a Chick Fil A sandwich. You're like, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what impressed me is my daughter worked there, and I thought, man, I hate this because I love I love Chick Fil A because I thought she was going to tell me war stories about what yeah really how goes bad it on, is right you now. And no, she comes out every every day. She would come home and work. She'd have her Chick Fil A stuff, and I thought, you know, if you want a compliment right there, if you work there, yeah, and you. Take your little meal. That is your meal. Of course, that was one of the reasons she wanted to work there because if she loved Chick Fil A, right. they've been a really good helper with our charity. Also, whenever any opportunities come right. up, they've always stepped up. Well, I spoke for the uh, kids. They've been awesome. So. Lisa and I spoke at their every year. They have their they call it their owners rally, and all the owners of Chick Fil A's come together in a certain place. It was Orlando. We did it, and so Lisa and I went in and spoke. They have a they kick it off, which again shows you what kind of people they are. They kick off their weekly, and it's about business and stores, and you know it's just like a week long thing for the business owner. But they kick it off with a big devotional, 
And so they had like a great Christian band in. They had great worship. And then Lisa and I did like a and a you know, with the moderator. And it was great. I mean, the people were awesome. And you see, you meet all these owners, and you're just like, of course, a lot of them were fans of our family and the show. But you see why that they run so well, because they're owned yeah. by a lot of really great people. So I, I wanted to open up a place, call it Duck Filet. Same kind of concept, but just ducks. What do you think? <laughs> Ducks popular not as well. I meant like the grilled version. Yep. You know, I mean, if you you had the you could have bacon, yep, wrap wrap ducks, yep. jalapenos, and just make it you know good. I mean, that, that's good. It, you it, put it, a bun it on would it. Sell. I think it would work. Hmm. But that, you do duck, the same duck wraps. You'd have to get into the tame market, the tame ducks. Well, right. The Mus- More ducks which are, are better, eating. by the way. Yeah. By the way, that's the number one consumed bird in the world. Ducks. Why really? else are they here? Far out distances, turkeys, chickens, ducks. Really? The More? Asians. That the shocks Asian, me. The Asian countries, they're big. I would think with the. Well, now I'm minute. really thinking this will work. And you ought to open it in Asia. Well, I mean, we'd eventually move there. Yeah. I mean, that's where you'd make the money. Will you help us? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. I've had it before because people. You know, if you get the right kind of duck and you if cook it right. you want to right, get in the restaurant business, Jason. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I just want to start the business and let somebody yeah, else Trust me, you don't want to do it. Sticky chicken. What about sticky duck? Sticky ducks. Mm-hmm. I mean, they already got chicken. But there, uh, there's a chicken the place. The duck wraps are close to sticky ducks. I mean, they're close to yeah. sticky chicken. So tell the audience where, Dad, where, you, where the idea of sticky chicken comes well, from. What if I give the audience of, of what sticky chicken That's is? That's a then secret. Somebody <laughs> That's have, a, somebody That's a secret recipe. Well, it wasn't yeah. a secret. You read off, it in a cookbook. <laughs> and they'll pull off what the family you're talking about pull off. But Phil does that with a lot of animals. He has sticky yeah. squirrels, mm-hmm. yep. sticky chicken. We did the sticky frogs. Yep. It's a what process. makes it sticky is the way you cook it, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, but it's like potatoes. I mean, I I took what I did to a potato, revolutionized the French fry. Yeah. I I have better fries than McDonald's. When you think of the top, what two French fries? What do you think of McDonald's? Who else? Um, that's about it. Okay, my fries are better than McDonald's. The problem is I can't sell it because. What makes them so good is I cook them a lot longer. I mean, it's the way I cook them. Makes Bill's them had, had them. What do you very think? Very good. They're number one, very good. Well, I saw yeah. that just the other day they had that. They listed the – they did a poll on the – and McDonald's was number one. And I, I want to say it was uh, maybe some other company we don't – some other food place we don't have here out west. And did and, you and think then, of Jace's fries? I didn't because oh. I hadn't eaten French fries in so long, but I, it's been a, it's oh, been a while. You're missing out a lot of carbs, They're so. slow what? cooked. They're not like you put a bunch of Mm-mm. French fries in a basket and drop them in a, in yeah. a certain Negative. temperature. Right. This is slow. slow My idea slow. came from the fact of like when you go to a fish fry, and because everybody, when you have a lot of people, they're trying to do everything in a hurry. Right. So they'll take a bunch of huge potatoes and stick them down in boiling hot oil and cook them fast, and they're like hard and greasy. Yeah. Horrible. And so McDonald's figured out how to make them crispy and light. Right, right. Well, I figured out. Now, they do it fast, frozen, but the reason mine are better is because I take a potato and actually right. cut it up, and I don't use much oil. It's, it's it's a little oil, and I put it in cold. I use peanut oil. Put them in cold oil. So you don't. It's not heated when you put them. No. In. Cold no. I turn oil. the fire on and put them in. Okay. Yep. So then you watch it because what's going to happen is you're going to think I flopped it the first couple times I tried it. Yeah. Because as the the heat starts to you know get hotter, the potatoes will actually break down and they become mushy, but you don't panic. Because once that fire and you stir them around, that once that fire gets to its as hot as it'll it'll go, right. they then so they get soft, and then they get crisp, and so and they shrink. So you put actually a few more potatoes than what looks logical, and so as they shrink, the flavor much it, more it has a more potato flavor, and the That's fry will actually be twice as small as that so it, it started. 
and it will that be That was my next question. How, how thick are they when you put them in there? With the They're all shapes and sizes because, you know, I'm doing it in hand. But the smaller they are, the more crunchy they'll be. Yeah, right. Now, when you because you're eating mine, they're crispy. Right. But they're they're nice in the middle. Do it's they turn a the color? Are they brown? Oh, they're brown. They're, so they're brown. brown, but the bigger ones will be have still a you little You coat them with anything? The it is a no. great way to fix I French coat them fries. With Cajun seasoning. So you try that and let me know how that works. All right, well, let's take a break. So we love uh, small businesses, people that have ideas. I, we started with a duck call. Dad, you were good at making duck calls or actually fixing other people's duck calls. And that led to our business. Uh, there's a one of our sponsors is a, is a guy named KC Lund. The letters KC uh, Lund, and he is good at making knives. And he, you know, I talked to him on the phone when we were talking about them being our sponsor, and he was like, you know, I just was always good at it. And I said, well, that's exactly how Dad started. Like, you were always good at it. People brought you their duck call to make it sound good, and after a while, you thought, you know what? Maybe I can just. Make Phil, duck calls. Phil always gives that advice. You find what you love and then see if you can make a living doing it. That's exactly <laughs> that's right. So that's what KC, so he he's has, has had another job most of his life, and now he's able to shift over and make knives. And they're really good, made here in the USA. He used his Swedish steel, but he puts them together here uh, in the U.S. It's his passion. We want you guys to check it out. If, you, uh, if you'll go to KC, the letter, KC Lund, L-U-N-D, blades.com, uh, you can check them out, and there's 20% discount. You get free shipping uh, when you go there. And like I say, he's a great guy. So KCLundBlades.com, 20% off, get you a good knife. Yeah, so that's perfect having all this food discussion on a day when I'm doing nothing but chicken broth and water. So now I'm all hungry for French fries and can't even eat any. Which, well, you're, oh well, you tend to be a man of extremes <laughs> when it... <laughs> Cause like my metabolism, I pretty much eat what I want, but I'm that's act- good for I, a while. I'm more active. Yeah. So to me, these people who are dieting, it's not so much what goes in; it's what you, what's going out. Well, my also. problem is on the metabolism scale. Unfortunately for me and Willie, we took more of Mom's genetic yeah. makeup. We didn't get Dad's, which you did, which in this case was a great blessing because we tend to go the um, squatty the body, squatty body, Cajun, and I never had to worry about it till I got older because I, as you said, I was active enough where I stayed ahead of it. Now I've gotten older, even if I'm active, it ain't going nowhere. So I have to combine diet and exercise to, to not, you know, have a heart attack, which stinks, but it is what it is. I mean, you get older, that's what you got to do. Well, you got to create games. You know, I race my dog every day. He always wins, but it's just <laughs> why not? I let him out, and he he sits over because he knows what I'm gonna do, and I take off because he won't go to the front of the house. He right. poops in the same places, so I try to outrun him every day. <laughs> then when I get the food, he's it's a race back to the pen because it it's one way to get him in the pen without any problem because it's a race. So I run, he wins. So I mean, dog I, I've only mm-hmm. beat him one time, and the only reason is what's when that he, dog's name? Biggin. Biggin. Yeah, Biggin. He, the only reason I beat him. So the you're one, gonna try biggin again this year? Well, yeah. You know what we've been doing? I hadn't told you. Jay came up with this. You know, Jay was our last, yeah, last guest. guest. Jay had a good idea. I have to admit, I have a little, <laughs> I have a pond. You sound me. surprised when you said that. This was a good idea. I didn't think it worked until he filmed it and and showed it to me while I was in Montana. I have a little deck on my pond, and. He said, I think what we ought to do, because he's a whiner. He gets so excited. He said, is that, it looks like a duck blind because it has little railings. And he said, I'm going to sit in a chair because since I was out of town, Jay was feeding my dog. So before he would give him the food, he just goes down and sits on that deck. And he had got a ball in his hand or his dummy. And at first he's, <laughs> but he just said, nope, nope. And so after a while, you know, he just, he finally calmed down. He just they're just sitting there. Of course, this is what you do when you don't have anything else to do, which Jay qualifies. <laughs> and so once he's perfectly calm, he then sends the dummy out and he goes, gets well, then he sits there, do it again. <laughs> you know, he just he cause that's the way he is in the duck blind when he gets started. So Jay's trying to teach him there's a certain amount of waiting. And you're not getting anything until you're quiet. 
for an extended period of time. So since I've gotten back, I've been doing it every day. Same thing. I've so noticed it's, it's working. Well, it's a shorter. The the whining is getting shorter. You know, yesterday he, I mean, maybe the first four or five seconds. And then we sat there for twenty minutes. And then I then when he come back, he sat down quiet. So I threw it again. I was simulating the I boom my shot, you know. Yeah. Get him again. Like, no, that's what I'm talking. I was bragging on him because it'll be happy. interesting to see if it works. So we'll see if I that... looked back at uh, Blue's papers and uh he's he's eight as of about uh April. He's, he looks twelve. Yeah, he's eight. So, so he's well, he he's is, lived a hard, fast life. He got whiskers, one. his whiskers are gray, but but he's now eight years old. So I don't know in human years. I don't know about what eight is. They always say times seven, so he'd be fifty six. He's about my age. You know, if he would lose his voice, it'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. But I notice now (laughs) there's none of that. There's no barking, whining, nothing. He's just sitting down there. I notice he doesn't bark when you pull up anymore at all. Maybe he'll stop whining. Yep. For well, for our our new viewers, we've had a problem. Mimi, Mimi's the little yellow one I got now. Oh, you got a new doll. Yep, she's in Uh-oh. she's in uh, training school. Okay, so well, does guy, does she whine? No, no, she, no, no. She's not like like oh, old blue. We well, the last couple of females you had were much more reserved, and they tend to be a little lower yeah. key. We'll see how she turns out. But we, we use big and but blue Biggin's and yellow her. too, right? We'll just take a few yeah. and work them out a little bit, see how they turn out. I like big and I mean, I, I yeah, I, I, I like him, and I think this may work. Because well, he did, he did pretty good last year. Yeah, he got better and better. So if we could just get him to not whine. Yeah, because we've had we dealt with whining for a few years, and and vocal issues. Whining so, is not good, especially so, when you're blowing a duck call. You don't want your dog yelping while you're blowing a duck call. Yeah, it no. defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, kind of, kind of. You know, bang, bang, not, bang, boom. <laughs> it just does. Well, it's it. not good for the blind, but it's not good for the ducks either. So I'm so sports starved now. Because that's been the worst thing to me about this whole pandemic is no sports. I mean, they just kind of started playing some stuff again. But so they they said they were going to announce the SEC football. Oh yeah, schedule. we're doing it. Yeah, I know. But here's how here's how sports start. When I heard that, I saw it on the internet or something. So they was like, they're going to announce it at six o'clock on uh, SEC Network. I'm literally sitting there at five forty five, like. Yeah. Anticipating, like I'm watching the Super Bowl or something. I mean, that's how much I could well, not I just wait. Waited till six. I know I couldn't. Okay. I was so excited to see that. So I, I was thinking about that with football, which hopefully it'll happen. You know, I don't know. There's some it, conferences I, I, not playing. I think it is. Well, I, hey, you know when they have that commercial about the SEC and it says it just means more. Yeah. I thought, I guess it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the Big Twelve was the. I will say the Big Twelve was kind of the tipping point because when they committed, then it was like, well, ACC, SEC, Big Twelve. We can we can have a season. I mean, we can make it happen. See, I thought when they committed, I thought, well, now we got somebody to whoop. That's right. Do you realize <laughs> the amount of money Ooh. that these various players, right or wrong, standing, kneeling, acting a fool, whatever? But you add all that up, and you say, with all the money on the line, and if I was like a player in the NFL, I mean, you're bringing the country together to. Watch them participate mm-hmm. in the sport. Actually, why get your would, mind off. Why of would you make on. that a political issue? Why, why? Why would you do that? Well, it's a bad I mean, idea. I mean, you're right. The, sports is the one thing that traditionally has been outside of politics, that's right. which is what you want. I mean, that way you can pull together. You can be sitting next to. They're the, jeopardizing all these million millions of dollar uh, contracts. Billions. I mean, yeah, they're doing it to themselves. That's I don't terrible. get it. I don't either, and I, that's why another reason why, Dad, I like that I'm more of a college fan than a pro fan is because it's still a little bit more about the game and the enjoyment of it and all that. Although I'm afraid they're going to go down the same road and do the same kind of stuff, which would be really unfortunate if it because you know I notice they're putting like a patch. They get like yeah, they're letting them have some kind of statement. But you know what bothers me about that, Jace? Because Tebow, who who's a friend of yours and, oh, yeah. and, and a friend of us. You know, he put John three sixteen on his eye patch. And they were like, "Nope, we ain't doing." It. NCA said, "Nope, we're not doing that. We're not doing Bible verses." And then they said, "Well, it's well." They said, "It's not the Bible verse. We just don't know where this will lead." That's right. But now, but now we we're going to come back later. and put two patches. Uh, eternity. What? 
<laughs> yeah, that's a great thought, which is what Tebow wanted to do, you know. But- so some dude believes in Jesus, and he puts a right Bible, Bible verse. verse under his eye. That won't go. And somebody cares about that? Well, they say we can't do that, like Jay said, because we don't know whether it's That's what I'm saying. That's an issue. It's an issue. And so what's With the- all of the stuff I see tatted on various individuals, <laughs> a- I would think— uh, the face paint that you could wipe off, John three sixteen. Uh, uh, that tells has that you, even been ten years? You know what that tells you? There is a devil, and he is alive. Because less than ten years later, now you're, we're going to sew a patch on for our whatever our social justice cause is. Yeah, that's where it led, and now it's just you know. But it's so hypocritical. That's what I'm saying. I hope yeah. a bunch of them put Bible verses on. Let's let's take another break. So we've talked before on the podcast that I haven't always been the best uh, financial um, person, uh, my wife and I. So we've been in some financial struggles through the years, and we had to learn the principle that you can't spend more than you make. I mean, it sounds simple. But But to your credit, you have admitted that and tried to deal with it. And then grown into now I don't spend more than I make. It it helps to make more. Make better decisions. Make better decisions, exactly. So there's one of our new sponsors uh, is is a company called Bills.com, B-I-L-L-S.com. And basically they're trying to help people figure out how to get out of debt and then stay out of debt. Uh, which is what we should do. Good principles put in there. So you get first thing you got to have, you find yourself swallowing in debt. What do we do? What's our assessment? And that's what they basically help people with. So you go to their website, bills.com. You get a free debt assessment. In other words, what are we looking at? How do we get out of it? And they've done a really good job at helping people. They're part of the Freedom Financial Network since 2002. They've helped people get out of debt $10 billion worth and start making better decisions. So we want to encourage you guys to do that because we don't need everybody in debt. That doesn't help you or anybody else. Take the first step. Go to bills.com slash fill, bills.com slash fill, and figure out how to get out of debt and then how to stay out of debt. I mean, I'm all for social justice. Me but too. I mean, so is God. Right. It's not like he's representing something that's, anti people he, he's about god so loved the world yeah which is john, world john 3 16 and everybody in it which means every life matters i would in think the world oh, okay. to god and to us so you can't just I, this i've this been kind preaching of that before that became a thing <laughs> he did <laughs> i mean that's what i'm saying yeah. so the reason i the, brought that up is because one of our listeners um asked a question uh about football and so and we love football and so he wants to know our opinion about the play of Chiefs uh, quarterback Patrick Mahomes, uh, and then he asked specifically for Phil's opinion of his future as a player and his character. Oh, here you go, Phil. Well, start with this. I could take a step, just take a step, whether I was running up to the line and throwing it or whether I just took a step and threw it. I was good for about 65 yards in the air. Mahomes can take a step and throw it 80. Yeah. You're standing on the end zone. And I don't think he's that big. You're standing on the goal line. You're standing on the goal line and the ball hits down there on the 20 yard line. Yeah. That's a gun. Yeah. Therefore, he moves quickly. It seems that he has a fear of God in his heart, which is always good. Yep. And I would say, barring a severe injury, which is possible, yep. I would say he will he will glean if they all come together and play football and get off all this crap they into, <laughs> these political di- stuff, if they quit ranking with each other, they all can come out multimillionaires. They'd have a lot of fun doing it. And I think Mahomes, the sky's the limit. He's Have you he's, ever seen a He guy. has the tools hey, to get it done. Uh, Al's like, I don't know. He's not that big. He's 6'3", 230. Oh, well, I guess he is. Which is about, Which is what, about you what you are. Which is about what you are, not 230. You're 6'4", 220. No, I was about 175, 6'3", yeah. six, six, 175. Yep. Well, you, you I'm back wait. down to my playing weight right now, shifted around, <laughs> carrying out muscles, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't got that one. When I tore that one up, he's like, well, we could fix it in about 20 minutes, you know, with surgery. He said, but is it bothering you too much? I said, it's not bothering me at all. It just it just got a different shape to it. I said, you know, I can tell stuff had turned loose from well, the bone. He said, 
I'd ride it out. Well, it's funny. I we said, all right, I'll ride so it on out. in the woods last year. I think it was Dad. We thought it'd be a good idea. I think it was a Super Bowl was about to happen, so the guys were like, "Let's do a football episode with Dad. We'll get out in the yard and you know throw the ball a little bit." So you did. You got out there. And I don't know who else was on the episode for in the woods. You threw a few, just kind of soft toss, and then you had to do like shoulder. The, the physical therapy guy to work on your shoulder for oh, like yeah. a week just, oh, yeah. <laughs> just from like four or five times. Yeah, I thought, no, well, it ain't it, the old it, days, is it? Oh, yeah. So, but you're born with that. He was born with that particular skill set moving right. around and a good arm. You can't teach someone how to do right. that. Tebow, he, he, he came a back too far. A little bit of a far. hitch, yeah. He came back too far. Right. In other words, this cost him too much time in the NFL. Right. He come way back. He well, could while do it he's in college. Coming way back, the gap's closing on you. Yeah, you, you have to keep the ball, and you know that's Mahomes. Their, their windows are like this. It's like this. He's looking over here. True. I mean, he has good yeah. peripheral I've never vision. Seen to a put guy, it mildly, I've never seen a guy that had as many arm angles as he that's does right. to get rid of the ball and still. I keep remember it. when he played against LSU. I mean, I thought this guy is a freaking nature. I mean, we won because he played for Texas Tech. No, you know, I'm not hating on Texas. No offense. Some of them is family. Fan. They go to Texas Tech. And they're, of course, I always when I see them, I'm like, sorry to hear that. But <laughs> just talking about football. That's right. Just, and uh, but you know, he he put on a show even in that game that they lost. Yeah. But he's he's an incredible. I mean, was that I'm, a, I'm with you. Was that a bowl game? Uh, Must have been I a think bowl we game. We played them during the regular season. I don't season think so. That had to be. Maybe a bowl it was a bowl. Game. Somebody a fan we, we will stra- tell us. We strapped them. Oh yeah. I'm excited for the Chiefs because you know they took Clyde Edwards Hilaire right. in the first round. Who I'm always I like these stories when they say a guy's too small and he's yeah. never. I mean he was at LSU. He really didn't get a lot of fanfare. That guy. I mean everybody talks about Joe Burrow. We love Joe Burrow. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, pound for pound. Yeah. I mean, even in Alabama face it, game, he beat the he he guy, he's the reason we won the Alabama game. He's this he's this tall, and he was running over through dragging people that were twice his his size. I mean, go back and watch that film. I was literally he. I got so fired up watching him during that game. I I would get up and just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just I like what about, seeing what did a you man. Do? What did you heart. do on the when the he he took that one step and then did that spin move? And just, I mean that that was one of the most amazing spin t- move. He did that little you know. And you know he was at I LSU. Think maybe and he, once the coronavirus thing calms down, they get the vaccine going and all that. It's a thing of the past. That's coming up pretty quick. When that's all passes, uh, maybe these sports organizations will just kind of get together and say, look. <laughs> I mean, we're we're performing in front of the country. We need to be a little bit more accepting of yeah. people who don't necessarily have the same I ideas. Agree with everybody. Well, right, and it, I even saw some of the Chiefs fans that thought that was a bad idea. I'm like, well, this guy, he was the heart and soul of our team. He was. And, you know, you remember the story that happened a couple of years ago. He's at LSU, and he orders something online or something and goes and meets somebody to get it, which, look, I don't know about that. Yeah. but And the guy tries to rob him. You know, and pulls a gun on him. Of course, he, you know, Louisiana, we have guns, and he yeah. had one legally yeah. and shot the guy. And I'm, and then the next week he was out because they completely cleared him. And I mean, he was it was self defense, and he was out there, you know, practicing with the team next week. You know, and I'm because I just remember in that shows game you how tough he was. Because well, most- yeah, he he was running over people, and I was like, he just shot a man. <laughs> This guy's, I mean, they're like, oh, this little guy, he's not scared. And, uh, you know, I was probably embellishing that, blowing it out of proportion, but I, and it was completely justified. And he did it, you're right. But I'm like, this guy's got some heart and he's got some toughness. So I'm excited about that combo. And what I, what I else you got there, Al? Um, well, I think that handles it with, uh, with him. Let's, let's take a quick break and then we'll answer another question. So we're always talking about how to work hard, make money, keep money. Um, I know we've talked before on the podcast about insurance. Um, we didn't have it for a long time because 50 years. That's right. And then finally, dad said, if we ever make any money, we can get some insurance, which was probably a good idea. And you got plenty of money by all the insurance you want. In but- some cases, you can't make that decision when it comes to your home. You know, you have to have insurance on it. If you have a, you know, a bank note on it, your car, 
uh, the state of Louisiana, you have to have insurance. I just remind everybody that eternal health care is, in fact, free. There you go, which is always better. Yep. Uh, one of our sponsors is a company called Gabby Insurance, G-A-B-I. And basically what Gabby has done is they go in and they shop the rates for whatever insurance is you're looking for it, and then they just give you, here's the best rate. It's just kind of a simplified way to be able to do that online. Basically, they save on average $825 a year for people that use them. So it's a good opportunity if you need some insurance to check these guys out. It's totally free to check your rate. There's no obligation. It takes about two minutes. If you go online, it's gabby.com slash unashamed, G-A-B-I dot com slash unashamed. Find out how you can save some money on your insurance. So there was there were several questions that we got that I thought were really good. And I was going to ask you this one, Dad, because I get this a lot from people. And because uh, they know that, you know, we voted for Trump and we've been pretty open about about why. But so I get this a lot from people in the evangelical world is that how do you support Trump when he's so immoral uh, is, is the question. And usually, I mean, let's face it, Trump, we know his history. He's a very public figure and it, it, he has had some terrible things he's done in his life. And he's, you know, that the whole country knows about. It. So the question is, how do you. How do you vote for a guy or support a guy or tell people to vote for a guy who uh, has been immoral? So what would you say uh, to that? We covered this earlier in the podcast. Uh, John chapter 4, Jesus sees a woman at the well, and uh, he says to her, he said, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. And Jesus said to her, you're right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you've said is quite true. Yeah, you, you. So here's a woman. She'd been married five times. The man she's married, she's shacked up with him at the time. Yep. And Jesus picks her in order to get some converts in a particular town there where and she goes into town and and she starts giving her testimony about Jesus. My point is uh, if we're the man who wrote most of this uh, New Testament here, these are his words, not mine. You say, what did this guy do? Uh, you're saying, well Donald Trump, uh, this guy says here is so immoral. I don't know about the is right now but i know in his past he's uh it's pretty clear that he was a very sinful man so so was i so here's the, the apostle paul i persecuted the followers of this way christians to their death here's a murderer arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison for no reason except they said we believe in jesus this guy says, I persecuted them to their death. I threw them into prison. He said, and all these people can testify about how bad I was. So here's the point. He wrote most of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul. He said about himself, let's see, in another place to show how sinful some people can be and God will still use them. Even though I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, he mentioned that in the one I just read, and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Well, that's where Donald Trump was in his past life. But or I know so this. He, so he thinks. I know this. When I, I when I ran into him, if you're wondering here, what whatever this guy's name is, if you're wondering why we preach the gospel to him, it because add up all your sins, dude, before you add up Trump's. Add your own sins up. And you're like, hmm, whoever keeps the whole law but just stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. What's the diff? So, yes, yeah, so, uh, Neil Cavuto asked well, you that same question remember, sure, on his show. Sure. And you said, Neil, you ever sin? Yeah, and he was like, you talking to me? I said, <laughs> How many sins have you ever committed? 
<laughs> if you're wondering why we vote for Trump, because he's, I said, are you part. looking for people who are not sinful to be on, to go to Washington, D.C., the House, the Senate, the presidents? Are you looking for men who have never made a mistake? Because uh, the, the deal is well, now. How would you have a preacher? How would you even have a preacher? You wouldn't right. have I mean, a lot, a lot of preachers, I'd say more than half probably, have horrible stories. That's right. And pass most and of them. That's that's what happened. They got motivated coming out of a bad life, and yeah. then became you, like you people, find just yourself like in Paul. that position. Then I just look at what they do. But look, also I'll, to be fair, on the other side, I mean, once Obama got elected, I didn't agree with most of his policies, but I wasn't running around in the streets, right. you know, with sign. He's the president. Yeah, and I'm an American citizen, and that's what we're going. In with. fact, I suffered it, through it with all the rest of us. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. I just, I just. Well, in fact, but, let me just add to that, Jace. Yeah. I, I used to say this about Obama, especially some of the presidents we've had in the past. I love the fact that he was married to the same woman. He had two daughters. He was, yeah. a, he had a family. I mean, there were a lot. That was of, the point I was going to yeah, say. There were a lot he, of good qualities. He didn't about have him. that kind of baggage with his. But but you can always pick something about everybody, which is what people who deny any kind of godly presence. Because look, you got to give uh, the president Trump credit for this. He has really been an advocate for people of faith. Yeah. Oh, over and over so again. So to answer the most, Ben's the most final, in our lifetime. Yeah. To, to answer Ben's final little it's not question, ben. don't blame that on Ben. Well, <laughs> it's poor Ben from Ben. No, it's on the next. Oh, page. the other Ben. Yeah, yeah. So whoever the guy <laughs> is, you're wondering why we vote for Trump because he's a sinful man. Here is a trustworthy saying, my man, that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Donald Trump, myself, and you, dude, uh, of whom I am the worst. This guy said, look, I was the sorriest, low-down sinner. I killed Christian people for yeah. no reason. He killed yeah. a preacher. Sure. He says, <laughs> I'm the worst. But for that very reason, he was so sinful, and he was allowed to write most of these letters, including what I'm reading. He said, for that reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be glory, honor, and glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm just saying, you say, as the kingdom of God's people, we try to elect godly men. But while the president, the current president, Donald Trump, was running, he invited me to talk to him. And I'm like, so I will tell you, dude, you say, well, how long did it take you to point him to Jesus? About 30 seconds into the conversation, I said, whatever happens. And I showed him what Jesus has done for him and all the rest of the world. Okay. Jesus died for you, Trump. I said, you do have sins? He said, oh, yeah. I knew he was honest. Faith comes from hearing the message. He listened intently when I talked about Jesus dying on a cross for Donald Trump, along with everybody else, was buried in a tomb and raised from the dead. I said, Donald, you're going into a six-foot hole. The guy that asked this question here, he's going into a six-foot hole. You say, we're all sinners. That's why Jesus died. Therefore, we just point people to Jesus, whether it's the president of the United States or that's a homeless guy sleeping under a bridge. They're all the same to us. Right. That's why I don't watch the news. It's like people don't give them the benefit of the doubt. People have their narrative of what they think, and then no matter what happens, they defend it. So I don't. I don't do that. Yeah, I think, and I think that's a good way to do yeah. it. So let's let's take one last break. So one of the things, Jess, you talked about what uh, Trump has done for evangelicals and, and the Christian community and believers, you know, it's funny because the first thing he, he did when he picked his running mate, he picked one of the godliest men in government. Good in, move. In Mike Pence. So that shows you right there. He understood something about mm -hmm. the importance of still having the importance of godliness around him because I, I met Pence and he and, uh, had a good conversation with he and his wife and they're amazing. I mean, they're, they're hardcore Christian believers. Yeah. And he, he told me the same thing. You know, he said, because we talked about it. He was like, you know, a lot of people are like, why are you, 
on the ticket with Trump at that point, especially, you know, when he was running. Say what you will, uh, acumen, A-C-U-M-E-N. You said, what about Trump's acumen? Stack it up with somebody like Joe Biden. <laughs> acumen is keenness and quickness in understanding and dealing with a situation. Mental acuteness. So I have labeled one Donald J. Trump as caustically brilliant. Yep. He he has a, a an incredible mind. Oh, yeah. His acumen is first rate, way higher than mine, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, so you know, the bottom it, line is I pointed him to Jesus, which is my job. He listened carefully. I believe he accepted Jesus. I really do. Mm-hmm. Now, I call up there, you know, on the telephone. He calls me up. <laughs> I said, they baptize you yet? And he said, no, but I need to do that, don't I? And I said, you need to do that as quickly as possible. Bill's so, conversation. <laughs> Inquiring is, minds want to know. It is funny that that's probably the only person. You were there, Al. Was, I was there. I heard it. It's exactly yeah. what he did. We were driving in a car, and he's talking to the president. I can hear the president talking. And well, the other side will say that, well, the only reason he did all that is he's trying to get your votes. And uh, But I'm like. Well, even if that's true, that will work with me. That works with me. That's exactly right. If you're right. open, we're not mind to, readers. Yeah, if you're if you're open to uh, you know just using common sense when protecting religious to, liberties, yeah. sticking up for the unborn. Yeah, exactly. He well, could right have easily said. And, he could have easily said, "Get that Bible out oh, of my face." Well, right. Who is this guy? But I knew he was wasn't going to do that, or he wouldn't have invited me. What's interesting is, Dad, you did that the first time you met him. Well, yep. actually, the second, because we had shaken hands with him at that rally in Washington. But the first time you got to talk to him, yep, that's what you did. And yet he may he's made two attempts since then to talk to you more. That is that correct. tells well, what you right is, there. What is such a false narrative out there? And look, we can only speak from our experience, but our because I, you know, I'm more friends with Don Junior. Don Junior. But you got to get Don he, Jr. on he, our podcast. You would not. Hey, I I said. I know he, he's busy. He wrote a when, book. When the campaign's said, yeah, over. Yeah, when the I'll, campaign's over, we'll get him It's up. like, oh, we're trying to run an election here, Jeff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's true. I'm like, why yeah. don't you be on our podcast? Oh, yeah. uh, we're running for president. Yeah. yeah. All okay. right. We'll get back with you later. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was going to say is one of the things that I had unfortunately just formed an opinion on, because that's like when I see a question like that, I'm thinking – You've already formed an opinion based on what you've heard and based on what you think, which I try not to do that about anything. But you wouldn't think that that Mr. Trump would be very open just based on how you how yeah. he's presented. Right. And uh and same thing, you know, I was shocked at how open uh Don Jr. was to what I had to say about the Bible, about religion. He didn't ask a question and he literally would sit there and listen and ask questions and and this you had the same, same experience thing. with the president same and I, I was just saying all we can do is based on our experience my experience they were sitting there like very open listening to what we had to say about the bible about religion sure. about what needs to be done in the country mm-hmm. that would be helpful and i because you I, talked about hunting and everything with don g i mean like he was lot. asking me like what do you think about these hunting uh you know the sanctuaries and yeah, what's weird, I think I shared this last time. I, I basically told him, I was like, they have millions of acres. They as in you now controlling it. I was like, you have so much that you're kind of hurting hunting because these these animals are smart. They're they're just like, if we just stay right here, we don't even have to be wild. And they lose their wildness and you're basically Which actually hurts them in the long run too. So I said, why don't you just I'm not asking to go out there and hunt it. I'm just saying make it open to hunting for maybe veterans or people with special needs. or And they just, did that. And they did it. Took three years. I'm like, welcome to the government. And I'm not <laughs> sure they did it because I said it. Jace, but I, you are driving policy in America. How do you feel but about But you know that? what? Look, to be fair, because I don't want you to think we're down here and they're listening and saying yes. I mean, they listen to everything they're not calling about us the Bible. Day, right? Look, we got, we got on poker. I brought it up. I said, look. Y'all have poker because now it's illegal in America to to play poker online. And I said, I'm not a gambler. And he's like, Well, I thought you played poker. I was like, Oh, there's a difference. And y'all heard my <laughs> we've had all we've heard this. Before. I don't. I wouldn't go to a casino and play blackjack because the odds are not my favor. I'm not a gambler because the casino was built on people 
playing blackjack. Yeah, which is, look, now if you want to do it for entertainment purposes, I find no problem with it, you know, but if you've lost your house <laughs> and your job because of it, oh, that's sinful behavior. Exactly. That's just dumb. That's right. And so I told him, I was like, I gave my speech. I said, look, here's what I think you ought to do. I said, open online poker back up because it's, it's a game of skill. I said, there's luck involved. And he was like, no, I think too many people have a problem with it mm -hmm. and they lose their money. So no. And I was thinking, can we keep talking about it? <laughs> or you know, he just disagreed. He said, I think it leads. He actually took the religious side of it. He was like, you know, not, not, we're not doing that. And I was like, but I really disagree with that. I think <laughs> now that it is open, I think in three States or whatever, right. but, uh, Okay, he didn't like that idea, and it went nowhere. And guess what? You still can't do it online. And I'm sure I've offended half the religious people who listen. But oh yeah, I get the emails if, every if time. If you, you don't about understand this. the game, I walk into a casino. If I play a card game with nine other people, I've created my own odds here. I don't have to beat the odds. I don't have to. I'm not gambling. I just got to beat these nine people. You know, <laughs> that's it. We're we're playing a game. And what I've noticed about poker, which is my point about gambling, the same people win every year. Go look up the poker tours. Yep. It's the same guys. Why are they just that lucky? Even me and my experience, how come I keep winning? <laughs> you know? That's right. And and I've had people who don't understand the game say, Well, I'll play with you. And guess what? They lose. <laughs> What's interesting is I've never played a game of poker. Yeah. I would lose. Well, I'm going to give you a <laughs> I tip. Would, I if, played one or two, yeah. and I lost, and I quit. And playing. I'm not. People say, well, you're being cocky. No, nope, I'm just telling you there's skill <laughs> involved, and the better players win. If I've we never play found Phil, a Bible verse that condemned it. If we play a game of poker, you will lose. It's just a fact. So why do the religious people, you said, condemn it? I've never read the verse that condemns it. Because, well, because I think because they look the at the problems yeah, that, that, that happen, and there are people. It's the same thing with drinking right. to me. The same yeah. thing. You'll never get drunk if we, you never take a drink. You have to look after so, your family, and you, you, you gamble it away, and your house is gone. Which and, is wrong. Yeah. And it's sinful. Right. Yep. But when you, when you put something in a category that you know nothing about, there's where they messed up. They don't know anything about it. Right. They just assume, since it's done in a casino, that it's gambling. Not true. It is a game of skill where there is some luck involved. But you could go down a road here with that, like, well, that means you can't fish in a bass tournament. Why? Because there's a little luck involved on how big your bass is that you catch. But if we do it for a year, guess what? The best bass fishermen? Are gonna win. You're gonna rise to the top. Well, ain't nobody trying to shut down the bass tour. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, and there's it's, money involved. It, there's money involved. The so big money. What are yeah. we playing bingo for? Guess what? I wouldn't play bingo. You know why? That's gambling. <laughs> I'm not a gambler. Now, do I think it's wrong? No, but I personally you could do get it. it down to horse racing, car racing. You could just go on well, and on and that's on. What horse racing is gambling. Yeah. You know, I'm saying we have a game here that skillful people play especially analytical, you know, y'all know yeah. me. I'm by, I, I play in games where I like to know what everybody has without them turning their cards over. <laughs> so in this game, there's a lot of things about math and money management and patience and perseverance that comes into play. Yeah. But where you become successful is, is that you're, you're watching people and just by human nature, they give their tendencies and it gives their hand away based on the circumstances. Which is well, Jason, you're a guy and you, uh, uh, we make a joke out of it, but it's really not a joke that you in the stock market, you're taking your money and putting it here and you take yeah. some more money and put it there. You are gambling. That these that well, is, now I'm going to say this. Is, I it, would, is it gambling? When I, you say, I would say I, I wouldn't qualify it as gambling, but I would say this. It is more gambling. There's more luck involved than playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless you're Uncle Si, and then it's maybe something. What, but it's a fair point. But it's the same thing. If you put the work in, you do the research, you're, it, it's still the hardest working, skillful people that don't give in to fear and greed, greed to use that 
are, are the people going to win? The same thing happens when you're playing cards. If people are trying to be greedy or they're scared to lose, or you're using those basic human nature fundamentals to put your formula into action, which is built on discipline, perseverance, you know, <laughs> knowing people. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's what Most it people is. Are too boring, but I was just it? saying that we were talking about and, and answering that question. It, it wasn't like they were telling me what I wanted to hear. He categorically disagreed Which with me about point. that. Right. And, I mean, and I'm like, okay, you're wrong, but <laughs> I respect that. That's right. But when it came so to... It wasn't some, like he's just trying to win you over. Oh, no, he immediately said, there's a lot of people that have a problem with that, and I would never... Now, this is the son, but he's like, I would never try to get that back going. I mean, they agreed. <laughs> that needs to be outlawed. I was like, oh, I disagree with that. You know, you legalist. But no, I didn't say that. So we're out of time. Uh, thanks for checking it out uh, today on the podcast. Don't forget about Jesus Politics. Uh, check into that. Give us a good review or give us a review on Amazon.com. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.